first off, you know, thanks for uh, allowing me to do the interview, man. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I appreciate you, man, for, you know, for reaching out, man. I really appreciate you, bro. So, really, um, I got a chance to, like, do my research again, you know, uh, just a little bit more in tune. So, you grew up on the east side of Detroit, right? Yeah. Uh, Mac and Van, Mac, Mac and Van Dyke area to be exact, um, Seaburn Street. Okay. Well, uh, what elementary or middle school did you go to? I went to uh, Joyce Elementary School, which is on uh, Seneca Sylvester East Side. Then I went to uh, Whitney Young. Went to Whitney Young Magnet Middle School. Um, went to Barber for about maybe about a week. My mom pulled me. Cause all my the neighborhood kids was in there, so she sent me over to Whitney Young, man. That wasn't that wasn't in your neighborhood. No, Whitney Young is actually uh like behind the school right here behind us. It's uh called Bunch Preparatory Academy now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm assuming you play well elementary. They ain't really have teams. In elementary. No, elementary is funny. I played in elementary. Um, uh, that's when I discovered I could play. I was in gym class in the third grade. Um, and I was just playing around. You know, kids. So what you eight years old at that time? Just picked up a ball. I was good at it. It was to the point. Um, I think the gym teacher told like the staff members of the classes would just come into the gym during my gym hour just to watch me play. It was pretty. It was pretty crazy. That's when I discovered I was a good kid. I'm a good, good basketball player. But um, at the time, they didn't allow third graders to play. It was only for fourth and fifth graders. So, so the, my coach, was, well, he was the uh, gym teacher. He was pushing for me to play, but the rule was uh, only fourth and fifth graders. So I had to wait till that following year to start playing organized uh -huh. ball. Fourth grade, that's pretty good to uh, have organized basketball around that time. Yeah. So when did, when did it start? When did you or people around you start really noticing that you, um, you know, you were really good at it? Like I said, they noticed when I was as young as third grade. Um, you know, people can attest that, that I grew up with. I got friends I still talk to from elementary. That's a blessing. But uh, really in the fifth grade, uh, I, I played in the fourth grade. I started. I was starting in the fourth grade. But that fifth grade, my first game I had, I was in fifth grade, man. No lie. We played against Lynch Elementary. i never forget. I had 22 points as a fifth grader in my first game. Like at the time, I knew I was good, but... I was out there just playing on natural talent, you know what I'm saying? And that's when everybody was talking like, man, y'all seen this kid from Joyce Elementary. That was back when I was in the fifth grade. So that's when people discovered I, like, I really had the talent to, to be a basketball player. The, the, the title of the, I mean, the name of the channel is Education Over Everything. So I got to ask, well, at, how, at what level academically were you during that time? You felt like you were... You know, you were, you were handling your business in the classroom, or were you struggling, or were you excelling? How were you during that I, time? Um, at that time, when I was in the fifth grade, I, I believe I was just selling, mm. like every other kid that's that young, you know, 10, 11 years old at that time. You just selling. Um, you know, you're not really pushing yourself at the time. Um, but my mother, you know, my grandmother, they always stayed on me by my academics. They 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 stayed on me. They, they always stressed that because um, they made sure I was in school every day. You know, you know, you see kids now. It's, it's it's drizzling snow on the ground. They ain't going to school. We walk, we walking to school and it's just snow. They school. You, you know, know they, they canceling school yeah, just for yeah. enter because they see snow might be coming. They yeah, canceling. Yeah. So when I was growing up, it was a little different, man. Me and my cousin, we was we was walking to school and inches of rain. We was walking. Yeah, yeah. So, but to answer your question, my grades, I think I was just getting by because mm -hmm. at the time, at, you're not young, you don't know the, the importance of bringing home all A's or being out of road student. So what was what was middle school like? You going into middle school, were you recruited to go to that middle school? Oh, well, you went to, uh, you didn't go to Whitney Young straight out of elementary. No, so like I said, I went to Barber for maybe like a week. Yeah. My mom, when she found out all my neighborhood friends there, she asked for me to Whitney Young because she knew it was a little bit more better academically. It was more structure there, which I needed. And Whitney Young, they had a team. Didn't have a middle school team. That's what threw me off. Like Barbara had a team. A lot of um, you know, a lot of players around our area played middle school ball. Obviously, yeah. anywhere, yeah. whether it was at Nolan yeah. on the east side. Or, or didn't Ricky play for Whitney Young? Ricky didn't have a basketball team. 
But Ricky was there. Now, I, but Ricky, see, Ricky is older than me. I, I think I think I was a uh, I was an eighth grade and Ricky was a senior. I want to say. Okay. Okay. Um, and I well, remember I, I remember I was he in. He was a, a freshman. What, what year did Ricky come out? 2000. 2000. I was a freshman. Yeah. I was I was an incoming freshman. Because Ricky and uh, Glenn Bateman. And Glenn Baby. Yeah. With the cast. Yeah. yeah. Went to Wendy. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, hmm. so y'all didn't have a team? So where, where did you play? So, so I played um, PAL. Um, I oh, played yeah. for the team um, called the All-Stars. Um, it was elementary. It, it was a, my coach was coached at a, a school called Maya. His name is Duran Shepard. Coached at Maya. We played in our same league. So that year, um, our league threw an all-star game at St. Cecilia. And he came up with a brilliant idea. He took all the all-stars and he got with our parents after the game was over. It was like, I'm gonna put together an AAU team so they can play AAU. And just luckily, um, I was able to play um, during my whole middle school career. I didn't play in the middle school league per se, as far as my school, because we didn't have a team, but I played PAL 1300 Bowman, played every weekend, I played in different church leagues. But I played with the All Stars mainly. He was always traveling, just playing different areas um, in middle school. So, what was what was school school like at Whitney Young? Was it, was it? School? It, it was a good school, man. We had teachers that really um, got us ready for the next level. Um, they 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 instilled values in us, and they got us ready to for, to go to high school. And it has no high, high school uh, school work things like that. They just had that discipline and that structure there. You know what I'm saying? So. It was good for me. And how I heard of Ricky, it was a big newspaper article of Ricky. I seen him when I was in the, um, eighth grade. This when he was at Renaissance. Yeah. Yeah, I was playing at Renaissance. And they was, uh, obviously they was promoting him because he went to, we went to the same middle school. Yeah. And um, I, was, I was just like, you know, I, ain't, I, I didn't know him personally, but all you seen was a big newspaper article of Ricky Parton and how he was selling that Renaissance. Yeah, I remember time. that article. Yeah, you remember the article? Yeah, it was like a two page. It's like, like a two page yeah, article yeah, yeah. with him on the front. Yeah. So, uh, you know, him and, him and his sister went there. Like I said, they older than me, obviously, mm -hmm. but uh, that's when I first heard of Ricky Party. Yeah. So, you leave, so were you, you, did you feel prepared to leave, I mean, go to high school, where you were, I mean, definitely athletically, but academically you were prepared as well, you know, at Whitney Young? Yeah, I, was, I think I was prepared. I knew, I knew what I was supposed to do, mm -hmm. because like I said, mm -hmm. um, not only did the teachers and the administrator um, install values in us, um, my high school coach did also. Uh, he's, he was a teacher. He was a, he was a math teacher at Maya. He was a yeah. basketball coach. So he, he installed the importance of getting education and things like that. So if we came up with a, a, a battery report card during, uh, you know, pal time, tournament time, he would discipline us, whether if it's I'm not starting or whether if, if, if I got to sell the game. But he always on us about our grades. He'll never just show up to the gym. And as long as you can play ball, you plan. He made us, we had to do good academically play. So let me ask you, what did you have any tough opponents in middle school that you can remember, like somebody you just? Yeah, um, it's crazy, man, because like I said, um, when we started playing it, so I started playing AAU or yeah, yeah, middle school yeah. ball that summer going into the sixth grade. And Coach Shep, our team was the All-Stars. A lot of people know us, man. Um, he had us playing against older kids going to the sixth grade. We was playing against kids that was going to the eighth grade, going to the seventh. So that summer of us going to the sixth grade, we was getting beat by like 20, 25, 30 points. Like we was getting embarrassed, but we didn't even know we was playing against older kids. So it built that toughness in us. So that summer, like I said, that summer of me going to the middle school, I already knew the competitive drive because we was like, we, every tournament we going to, we getting beat. Even I mean, after ninth grade, I'm obviously, you know, 10th and 11th and 12th you stayed, but yes. how did that, um, did your grades get better or did you turn around academically or? Yeah, so when I got back to the ports, I came in with a different mindset because I knew what to expect, um, what was expected of me. So I proved um, grade-wise, I think I got, uh, I think I actually got close to honor on my 10th grade year. Like a 2.8, 2.7. Um, I took academics more serious because I knew that uh, that's what was expected out of me, not only from my parents, but from the whole uh, culture staff and the whole administration at the Porch that was expected for me to not just to settle for, not just to be settled, trying to reach my, my max. So 
I just was focused on trying to be the best um, student I can be at that time, and I went back to the poorest, my 10th grade year. And to my success, it, it played out well and had no problems at all that whole year. I think I uh, finished first team Class C for All-State. Yeah, I did finish first team uh, All-State Class C that year. I averaged 21 a game as a sophomore. So I just took a different approach. So you know, senior year, y'all won the state tournament? My senior year, we won, uh, we won our league championship and we won the, uh, the state tournament. And what? Um, who did y'all play? In a state championship? Yeah. Uh, Flint Beach and Marquis Mar Guayna. Played okay. Marquis Guayna in the state championship. Okay. So, and you signed to, well, committed to Michigan State. Which, what year was that? It's pretty early. I committed that summer going into my junior year. Mm. It's funny because, um, you know, Darius Acuff. Yeah. Had a, had, is having a good summer right now. Um, I'm a big fan of him, by the way. Shout out to Eric a. Cuff, he's a family guy. Um, me and his story similar. I went to Nike All American camp. Um, went to, we went to Boo Williams first. Um, had a good tournament at Boo Williams, playing against the top teams. I think I averaged about 35 that weekend. Um, so I blew up. It's all in on, on a, you know, like, like A. Cuff is now. Um, I looked up and they had me ranked number one point guard in the country, just like over a weekend. Who was that, Boo Williams? It's all Nike top Nike teams in the country, man. Like was, who? What? what, uh, what? Chris Paul and was there. So who did you play? I played against uh, I played against Chris Paul. Played against J.R. Smith. Those are some of like the top um, names I played against that that first summer. Ooh, played against um, Shannon Brown, D. Brown. And how did you uh, pair up against them? I just I, I I heard they was good. I laced them up. You know, by, by me being a city kid, you know, I wanted to prove I was the best. And I, I approached it. I did my, my whole mission and my whole focus was to show I was the best player on the court. That's what I wanted to do. I mean on, on top of winning, also winning was my number one priority because I won all through middle school. We won PAL Nationals. We won so YBO. Y'all beat you know, Chris Paul or J.R. Smith man. We beat them. We didn't uh, we didn't win Boo Williams. Um, we lost like in the quarterfinals. I want to say, mm. uh, yeah, we lost in the quarterfinals because you know, you play on a circuit. You got yeah. teams that's been playing together since they was young. Yeah. The, the family just come, come and go. Right, right. Well, um, yeah, you know how yeah, the family yeah, yeah. is. Once yeah. something they got a guy, they want to turn. They might get a kid. Mm -hmm. I, I joined the family late. I joined the family um, my sophomore year in high school. Okay, so okay, so you did you do well that game versus them or? I did well. I think I had. I think I gave J.R. Smith fifty-seven points that guy. And they was telling me at the game, like, you know, you just like you just gave J.R. Smith fifty-seven points. Fifty-seven I, points. Yeah, I didn't even know who he was. Like Vince Ball, Vince Ball and like he was doing press spotlight. Yeah. Like, like you know, Vince was over. Yeah. Andre Charity, all them, and then Speedy was always like, Speedy always because uh, when we was coming to middle school, when we was going to high school, Dion was the top player going into high school my year, Deion and Brandon Jenkins and Walt. Mm -hmm. They was a big three and, and Brandon Bell. Uh, I think I was fifth going into middle school. Um but uh going Chris, into high school. Going, I'm sorry, going into high school, yes. Yeah. Going into high school, obviously Deion was first, uh, Brandon was second. Brandon was tall to be a point guard at that time. Mm -hmm. Big Walt was was huge. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon Bell was good. And uh, I was fifth. Uh, those were the top eighth graders in the state that year. And uh Press uh, uh, Coach Walker, Miss um, Bubba did, did a, spread, a press spotlight camp at um, Eastern Michigan. And Speedy would, um, told me this when I was in going to 10th and 9th grade. Speedy was like, You the best in this class, and I need you. But he didn't get me that summer, he got me that following summer. But he always was telling Chef, like, Chef, I need, I need him. Like, you know, you're a high school coach now, so you can't be an AAU mm -hmm. coach and a high school coach. So since you're a high school coach now, yeah, I right, need this yeah. kid. Right. So that's how that came about. All right. Who else did you play with? Um, for the family? Or, yeah. Um, when I played for the family, it was me, uh, Carlos English, Curtis Gilmore, EJ Nwanko, Jordan Watson, um, Antonio Bonds, uh, those are some names I can name. That was like our, our top players mm -hmm. because the Hurricanes had all, they had Dion, and Brandon, and Walt, and Olu, 
and I'm an awesome and competitor. I didn't want to play with those guys because they was trying to say those guys was better than me. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I don't want to play with them. I want to play against them. But you did play with the Hurricanes, didn't you? So what happened was we played against the Hurricanes um, during the state AAU. We played against the Hurricanes. They was loaded. Like I said, they had everybody. Um, not to mention Stanley's Buford, um, Byron Davis. They they was loaded. We played against them at River Rose my, um, that, that summer be going into my junior year. And we beat them. To this day, I don't know how we beat that team. Um, had a good game. Um, had about 34 that game. And that's when they was like, he the best player in the class. Like, hands down. Now, Deion didn't play that game. Deion didn't play that, was, but they still had all the other top players. Deion just didn't play that game. But after that game, that buzz just went crazy. And um, that's when Greer was like, Greer used to call me Cotton Candy. He's like, Cotton Candy, you, 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 you coming with me. So um, once I got done playing with the family, I went to the Adidas big time. Uh, that summer, going into my senior year, I went, to, I went and played uh, in the big time. With okay. Greer. And it was me, Brandon, Deion, uh, Walt, and Olu. We had the top five players in the state on one team. Went to Adidas big time. How'd y'all do there? Um, I left early. Some things, personal things happened. It was a miscommunication. I didn't know the politics between the fan. I didn't. I didn't know the politics between me playing for a Nike team and then me going to Adidas team. Mind you, I was a top Nike kid. I was a McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So I played. With, I guess they looked at Nike. Looked at you playing on the opposition. You playing for the the Hurricanes. Mm -hmm. They Adidas team. Mm -hmm. So I was caught kind of like that crossfire between the programs. And like I said, I had a mother who didn't. My mother wanted to keep everything on the up and up. I gave Israel a commitment. It was rumors that I was transferring, leaving. I was going to decommit from Michigan State to go to Ohio State. So my mother didn't really know Chris Grid that well. You know, there's no shade on her. She didn't know him that well. She's like, just come on home. And I believe if I stayed, we probably would have won a big time because we had just had a big win. We had just had a big win over um, over Daniel Gibson. Now. We oh, had okay. just beat them. And um, that's when everything happened overnight. And all I know was Grill was like, you got to go back home. Yeah. It's a big... It's a bus stir up. Izzo calling your mother, saying you about to decommit and all this Man. stuff. So I just went back home. So before you went to the big time, you already it was a McDonald's game prior to that or after that? It was after. Now me, you gotta remember, I played well on the Nike circuit. Then I went to the Adidas circuit and played well on the Adidas circuit. I think I had about twenty seven points. Gary Pay was at the game. LeBron was at the game. So I put on the show. People knew who I was from, from the Nike circuit. Mm -hmm. You know, they knew my name. So once I played with, once they sent me on the Dita circuit with Chris, with the Hurricanes, um, I just blew up. I got to that tournament. I looked up. The McDonald's uh, came out with a committee. Uh, the committee voted, and I was at McDonald's like a month later. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think that Adidas tournament helped me because prior to that, Speedy uh, family didn't have any McDonald's All-Americans. Right. But I always give um, Coach Shep and Speedy the credit yeah. because they're the ones who develop me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I, I always take, I always say I'm a family, the first family make down all American because Speedy is the one who, outside of Shep, uh, we didn't have a Nike endorsements like Adidas had. You know, we didn't have the politics when I played for the All Stars. We, we was beating Josh Smith and them and Dwight Howard and them when I played for the All Stars. We beat them in Atlanta, we beat them in, in their in own time. But we didn't have a sponsorship like you know, like the family had. So Speedy was able to put me on that national platform against all of the scouts and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. The politics kind of side came out mm -hmm. when I got with the family. Yeah, you understand. you see it a little bit different. Yeah, I was able to play in the top tournaments because the family was sponsored by Nike. So Now you seeing people you reading about. Like, seeing oh, people I'm reading know. about. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's him. I'm saying like, oh, that's dude that from Ohio. That's dude from mm -hmm. uh, Chicago. Who they saying who this, who that? Yeah, you saying. So you you went to the uh, Peace Jam too. Went to the Peace Jam. Okay. Yeah, went to the Peace Jam. Did you go to Kentucky? I think it was like a bluegrass tournament or something like something like that. We went to man we went to so many places with the family. Man, don't give me the line, man. Yeah. Every top Nike tournament, I heard of bluegrass. I don't. I don't recall Michael. going to the blue to the bluegrass. I, I definitely remember going to Boo Williams. That was a big tournament in Virginia yeah, every year. Sure. Everybody know about Boo. Yeah. You know, yeah, Iris that came through his program. 
So, that's you know, when we, I first saw Darius Miles. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. when you see all the top players on on that Nike circuit when you go to Boo Williams. So well, every every Nike, top Nike tournament we was at. Yeah, for sure. And you know, the Nike team. It's a Nike team. <laughs> so when did, when did you, uh, so after all that's over, you getting ready to go to state. Yeah, after, so after I got done, because like I said, we beat, I beat Brandon, I beat uh, the Hurricane. So I'm like, okay, I can go play with y'all now. They was my homeboys outside the basketball court. I just had that Kobe Bryant mentality, mm-hmm. like I ain't teaming up with nobody. Right. Like once I beat them and showed the state, like, yeah. okay, yeah, like y'all, y'all see I what it is, them. now I can come play with y'all. So uh, who was all on your team in the McDonald's? On my team? Oh man, it was, um, it was, it was uh, Shannon Brown was on my team, Kendrick Perkins, um, Olu, Aaron Brooks, uh, Lou Aldang, um, I said Kendrick Perkins, um, Lou Aldang, James Lane. You... For some for some reason, I played on the West team. It was weird. Yeah. And LeBron was on the East. So, yeah. I don't know how he did it. Like, Chris Paul, LeBron, all them was on the East team. So, I don't know how they I don't know how they matched the teams up. I didn't never ask, but that's yeah. how it was. The went. West lost, though. Didn't we it? lost. Yeah. We lost to LeBron. Yeah. How did you do that game? Um, I didn't score. I didn't even score a field goal in that game. I didn't even take that many shots because yeah. it was – I had just won a state championship. I got there late. I want to stay championship, so I got there um, like three days after everybody was there. It's was partying in Detroit, partying hard, man. Went got to the McDonald's game. Um, I was already committed. I was ready to go to college, play ball. Man, I really was just there for the experience. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at that time, everybody wanted to prove that I'm better than LeBron. That's what everybody was saying, like, I'm about to kill LeBron. I'm about to do this to him in the game, stuff like that, because he was, he was the feature. It was in Cleveland. So I'm like, everybody, and I was a point guard, so once you pass the ball, you ain't getting that mug back Mm-mm. in the McDonald's game. Yeah. And I could have been more assertive, but I felt like at that time, I ain't had nothing more to prove. Yeah. I, was, I already made the McDonald's That's game. That's an all-star game. It was an all-star game. Yeah. I'm like, I ain't really got nothing to prove. I'm a McDonald's, you know what I'm right. saying? But just from a competitive standpoint, I wish I would have been more aggressive in that game just because you can't, you can't get that game back. So you always want to leave your mark on that game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 but you know. Sure. But yeah, I was already yeah. completed. I was already set. I was had a full yeah. ride. Nobody everybody really knew talks I was, about everybody how many knew I was like the top three point guard in the country. It wasn't no all star game stats. Yeah, really don't matter. it ain't. It don't really don't matter, man. Wow. It just it was it long. And once you made it to that, yeah. you made it, bro. Yeah. Like you scoring five points, you scoring twenty five points. Yeah. Do it matter? Nah, it it don't, don't take away the player you are. <laughs> so how how was it? How was the like, what was the atmosphere like surrounded by you going to uh, Michigan State? Like, was it? It was good, excited? man. It was, it was exciting because I was going to a home school. Mm-hmm. Um, and Michigan State was, they just won a championship in 2000 with my team, and, and they had the Flintstones. So, Marcus Taylor had just got there. Zach Randolph was, and was there. So, they was, Jason Richardson and them, they was already they was a talk of Michigan. They was winning. They won Final Four, won the national championships. So the buzz was good. You know, everybody rooted me on to go to state. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, and I was excited to go there because that because I, I watched Michigan. I was watching them win. It was like I said, that was my hometown team. So, and then to his old credit and his staff, man, they did a hell of a job recruiting me. Man, they made me feel like I was the. I was going to come in there and just, yeah. it's going to be Brandon Cotton uh, team. You know what I'm saying? Jersey with your name and on Jersey it. Jersey my man. name on it. And you, know, you know the recruiting process, yeah. man. And when you were a kid, you don't mm-hmm. know that's the selling yeah. point to get you oh, yeah, to the school. Sure. Bro. So they had the Brandon Cotton, and that was going to be in a 2005 NBA draft, pick number six. Like They did yeah. things like that, man. Yeah. So, you know, they sold me and my family for me to come there. Oh, yeah. They did their job. They did their job. Yeah, that's what they're supposed to do. Yeah, like, coming to all open gym. Yep, came to every open gym. Mm-hmm. Izzo would just come. I could just have a regular practice, team practice, and I would see Izzo there. He would personally drive to come watch me practice, just to see how my how I worked in practice. Or at the time, Coach uh, Mark Montgomery did, uh, recruited me and Mike Garland. Mm-hmm. They recruited me heavy, so they they always would come down there at least once or twice a month to come come mm-hmm. keep an eye on me. Yeah, that's yeah, that's for sure. They was on you. Yeah, they was, they was on me. They was on me, man. So, um, 
Did you even play a season at Michigan State? I didn't play a season, man. Like I said, I just did. It's funny because I just did a podcast about a month ago. Um, we, I told my whole story about how everything transpired at State. Obviously, I was a. Uh, I went there with the wrong mindset. Man. I watched that. I went there with the wrong mindset, man. I didn't. I didn't go up there prepared to work. Like when I came there, me and Shannon, me and Shannon came in together. Shannon so, Brown. Yeah, Shannon Brown. So you got like the best, you got like the number one backcourt coming in. I think I was ranked number three point guard in the country. He from Illinois? Shannon from Maywood, Illinois. Shannon mm-hmm. was number one shooting guard in the country. Mm-hmm. Going into college. He played for the Nike team? Shannon played for the uh, Illinois Warriors. They was mm-hmm. Nike team. We played against them several times on the circuit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Damn, him, and, him, and D. Brown's cu- him and D. Brown cousins. Oh, for real? Yeah, so him and oh, D. Brown wow. but both played for the Illinois Warriors, but D. Brown was a year older. Than, than us. The Browns are too. Damn. Okay. So, y'all were roommates. We was roommates. Man. My roommate. Yeah. So, what what were those conversations like? Man, me and Shannon connected because um, I knew, like I said, I knew who Shannon was. I, I was playing against him. Yeah. Um, we had some battles. Um, I'll never recall him beating us. I'm going to put that out there. I, Shannon ain't going to lie about that. We always, we always beat him. But no, Shannon came to me one tournament, man, and um, more the more we got acquainted, Cause Shannon's actually finna go to Kansas. He's finna mm-hmm. commit to Kansas. But once he said I was going to Michigan State, Izzo recruited him and he came up to me at a tournament. I want to say it was in Indianapolis for a tournament. And he's like, you know, Izzo really recruited me. Um, I got them Kansas and Duke in my back pocket to go. He's like, he's like, All right. but Izzo told me that you know you got a commitment from me. You go stick. You go. I don't know. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm gone. I'm going there. I'm from Michigan, so mm-hmm. that'd be a good fit for me. And so he committed about a month later. If that, he committed. He had a good career there. He had a great career there. He left as a junior. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to remember when he came in, he came in playing behind Calvin Tober, Allen Anderson, Chris Hill, Mo yeah. Ager. So he had his work cut off for him. Yeah. I mean, he was probably more decorated than them, but they had already had the experience on playing the Big Ten Division One level. So he still had to come in there and outwork them guys. So. How, did you how, how many games did you play? Or did you suit up? I for? played. Um, I played. Since I played all the ex- exhibition games, and I played my first game against Bucknell. I came down off a of, um, off a dunk, and I came down. I landed on my foot. I had a, a stress fracture in my foot because it's a. We used to have four, hour, three hour practice, two a days, so my body, I guess, wasn't used to that intensity, and I caught a stress fracture in my foot. So I set out. I got. Um, I had to sit out. Uh, six to eight weeks with that stretch fracture. Mm-hmm. So that was a difficult time for me just mentally trying to bounce back from a major injury like that. I'd never been injured before. Well, that's a theory with uh, Michigan State and Tom Izzo that he overworks his uh, players to the point where they're successful with the injury. Yeah, I got a stress fracture. And I'm a kid who used to play from sun up to sundown, like in the neighborhoods. But I guess with that intensity, the coach was yelling in your face, BC, get down there. You know, with that intensity, mm-hmm. I guess it was more strain on the body. And like I said, man, I just, I came out for dunk. I felt a little tweak in my foot, and my foot was kind of getting numb on the bench. I was just moving around. I finished off the game, but I got out because, um, like I said, me and Shannon was roommates. I stayed on the, on the top bunk. Shannon was the bottom. And I, when I stepped down off the bed the next morning, I couldn't walk. Man. I called the trainer like, yo, I can't, I can't put no pressure on my left foot. Like, I can't not walk. So, came, checked me out. Um, they got me over because I stayed in Wanderers, which is right across the street from the Branson Center. It was right there, so I just hobbled over there. And they did a test. and was like, you got a stress fracture in your foot. But it was a common injury. Allen and them had it. I want to say KT and them had it. Uh, Mo had it. Mo Edgar had it. All of them had, had it. They said, like, four of the guys previously had already caught the stress fracture. Damn. Yeah. It was just, and the doctor told me it's just overworking your body. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. It was so weird, man. You said three hour, two a day? It was three hour, two a day. Yeah. How long jump. did that last? The whole first month. Whole first month. Hmm. Did we, y'all have to practice with the football pads and all that? Rebound? Or did you, did we, you did a, that we did a football drill with the rebound. We did the, the defensive, uh, People overhype it, but it was just a drill that we did. It mm-hmm. wasn't an actual session. It was just a drill yeah. to get us. It's all tough, yeah. you know. That's what. But Big Ten was a physical conference. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, it was talented players there, but the Big Ten was a was a physical conference. So 
He just had us doing things like that to get us ready for, for our opponents and wasn't nothing there. So just a different little drill. Yeah, a different drill. It wasn't no punishment or like that. Yeah. Damn. So you played the first game and then and got then injured. I got injured. Yeah. So when I got injured, um, like I said, I was already kind of going through it because I'm like, hang on, I ain't playing. I'm, and I'm watching Chris Paul and him start at Wake Forest. Mm-hmm. I'm watching Andrew Lavender start at Oklahoma. I watched all my guard, Mustafa Shakur starting in Arizona, Aaron Brooks playing. I'm like, dog, I ain't playing. It's bothering me. But I'm like, at the time, I'm like, well, you injured. So when I came back from injury, um, it was against UCLA. And they had Trevor Reason now. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm getting ready to play. And I'm in practice. I'm, I'm doing my thing. Because at the time, I was like the only really creator off the dribble. Well, the guard the was there. Uh, at Michigan State. Point guard? No, I was only like play. I was only like playmaker we had at the time because Marcus Taylor had left early. Yeah, he had left. So Shannon, Mo, KT, Allen, they all was wing players, athletes. They run yeah. the wing shooters. So who played the point after you left? Chris Hill. Oh wow! Yeah. They put Chris, but Chris Hill was a shooter. He was our best shooter. But see, Chris Hill was forced to play that. I mean, Allen was forced to play that role because Marcus Taylor kind of left Izzo there for dead. He left as a sophomore. Yeah, remember he left early. So I don't think Izzo was prepared for him to leave that early. So I think that's why he probably was kind of on me. I, and I, until to this day, 20 years later, I think his intentions was to have me as his future star point guard like a Mateen Cleaves now. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wasn't patient enough to, to ride it out. And I didn't understand the definition of hard work. I was just always just the better player. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So, so that's, it, that was like the shock to me when I got to state. So you watching your know, McDonald's All American teammates do work in other conferences and other teams? It, you wasn't. It is. It was, was kind of bothering you. It, mentally, it just killed me, bro. <laughs> it killed me. And then when I so when I got so me thinking like once I got healthy, I'm like I'm about to get out here and play, and Enzo ain't even play me against UCLA. So that was another deal breaker. I'm like, nah, man, I can't do it no more. I already went through a six week long injury, not playing. I'm watching Shannon them getting better every day. I'm watching Mo and them getting better. You know, not being jealous of them. Yeah. Those are my guys. But I'm just watching players that I know I'm just as good as getting better. And I'm like, I don't understand. But it's like, dude, you've been hurt. Mm-hmm. You're not finna, like, you ain't, ain't, ain't like this show's junior year. Yeah. Like you gotta earn, you gotta you gotta earn your way back on the court, and I just wasn't patient enough to do it. So, going through all that mentally, what 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 were you thinking? Like, what school were you thinking? What where what conference were you thinking? I was thinking about going to another top conference. Um, were you getting phone calls? Or yeah, getting... I got phone calls. Clemson called me. Um, Penn State called me. Uh, of course, UAD called me. That's why I ended up going. UAD called me. Um, but I, my confidence was so shot. I had a homeboy who stayed up at, who was taking class up at Eastern Michigan. And my phone was blowing up. Like, man, I heard, like, you about to transfer? What's going on? Like, because we had, because the state had a game against uh, Syracuse that the first week in January. And I already told Izzo I was going to leave. Well, I guess the rumor I was leaving. So I heard Dick Vitt say, like, Brandon Cotton, don't leave Michigan State. You're going to regret it. You're going to be a future P- PTP or and all that. So I'm like, oh, man, like, this this getting serious, bro. Like, Dick Vitale, like, calling me out on TV. So I tried to escape the world, bro. Like, I went up to hang with my homeboy. Like I said, my homeboy wasn't a ball player, but Easter, he was taking classes there. Like, I'm about to come up there and just chill. I spent, like, two weeks up there, bro. I was just ignoring phone calls. I mean, obviously, I was answering the phone for my mom and stuff like that. And I had a daughter at the time. So I was answering the phone for, you know, for her mother and things like that to make sure my family was straight. But like any outsiders, I wasn't even answering the phone because I just didn't know where I was headed at in life. Yeah, you had to process everything. I had to process everything. <clears throat> and, it, and it hit me so fast, I know how to process it. Man, you were, you were 18 year old kid trying to process that you coming from a McDonald's All-American status to being, you know, the top player in the state of Michigan to now you got to figure this all over again. So what would you say is was the main reason for all that, like all the transfer and all that. Just a lack of accountability on my end, um, the immaturity. 
not understanding that um, you, you got to work, man. I didn't know. I just thought I wanted everything. I wanted everything given to me because I felt like I was the best player, or I felt like I was better than this player, or I felt like I was more of a true point guard than this player. Like I wanted everything given to me instead of earning everything. You know what I'm saying? Because you know how it is, man. You create controversy and stir up when you got upperclassmen. Like, I mean, I know, I know my man Cole. I know he coming in with the politics, but you know we've been here with you. Allen and Chris, them, they came in and they was thrown in the fire. They was forced to because Zach Randolph them had left, Jay Rich them had left, Marcus Taylor had left. They was thrown in the fire. They was they had already had two years up on me. I think I was a better point guard than Chris Hill. Yeah, no, <clears throat> not to Chris Hill. He my guy. He can play. He made a lot of money overseas. But I think I was a better point guard than him, of course. But he put in the work. I didn't. So. Yeah, I mean, in hindsight, yeah, it's, it's you. You think about it, man. I know that. I know. Does it? Does it bother you? Uh, to this day. Yeah. Um, just the, just the immaturity, just the, not sticking things out. Um, not trying to see how it played out. I wish I would have gave myself at least that whole year at state. Besides, versus transferring in the middle of the, not even in the middle of the season, in the beginning of the season. I didn't even give myself a chance to see how things would play out. Because if I don't recall, I believe every player that played at Michigan State, you know, I'm watching Shannon, he didn't just play 30 minutes a night there his freshman year. He's no one shooting around the country. He just he stuck it out. And he had way more competitors at his position than I had. But he stuck it out, and he outworked them. And he was the first-round draft pick as a junior. He's on ESPN once a week dunking on somebody. You know what I'm saying? So Mo Egger, Mo Egger, you see how Mo Egger came in. We all from Detroit. I remember we used to beat up on Mo Egger when Mo Egger was, was younger. He would tell you that. Mo Egger, but Mo Egger was a gym rat. He stayed in the gym, man. He he one of the hardest working guys I've ever. He was probably the most hardest working guy on that team, bro. His 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 growth. It was crazy. It was crazy. Like. We played Mo Egger and them going into the, going into my, Mo Egger was in the ninth grade going to the 10th. I was going into the ninth. We blew them out the gym. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think Mo had six points on us. But as I watched him year by year at Crockett, because my homeboy Maurice Head played at Crockett. That's, uh, Maurice is like my best friend. So I used to go to all that games, him and Deshaun Wood. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to go to all that games because we played for the All-Stars together. All of us played for the All-Stars. Oh, y'all played together? Huh? Yeah. Oh. Me, uh, Deshaun, Kurt Gilmore, Carlos, Inc. we all played for All-Stars together. Okay. So, I used to go to my homeboys' games. They used to come to support me, too. So, I watched Mo grow year by year. And then Mo knew who we was because we was the younger guys beating up on him. So, he like, man, these young cats cold. But I just I just watched him get better and better. And yeah. obviously, show he's the first-round draft pick, bro. So, yeah. Man, he... He didn't his, nobody get Mo nothing, ass, man. So. I'm telling you, didn't nobody get Mo nothing. Mo earned everything he got. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. He and he stayed in the gym. He stayed in the gym. Yeah, I saw that. That's, that that was that was. He uh, probably got the the best testimony, like yeah. coming from nothing to something. Like I literally watched him not be a good basketball player to become a great basketball player. Yeah, for sure. I literally watched it. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. He grew in everything. He grew in everything. Yeah, he exactly what he needed. Though. That's he, exactly what he needed, he, bro. But he had a good career too at state. Oh yeah, he had a good career at state, man. He had, he had, he had a great career at state. So, Lee, what? When did you enroll in UAD? I enrolled in UAD so uh, that January two thousand four. So after the um, you know after you after the Christmas it's break, right, yeah. I was I was on UAD campus in January. Of course you couldn't play. I couldn't play. So I didn't play to I, I, I enrolled in January 2004. I didn't play. My first game was against Eastern Michigan, December 20th, 2004. So I sat out that whole year. So how, how are you feeling finally getting back on the court at that point? Man, I was hungry at UAD, man. I went there like, man, I'm finna come. Because like, you got to remember, I had just watched Willie make it to the league. Willie Green. Willie Green had just made it to the league. So I'm like, man, if I come in and put the work in like Will now, I can go to the, I can go to the NBA too. I get a shot at the NBA from 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 uh, from six miles. Like just because you go to UAD, I mean, I watched Jermaine mm -hmm. NBA. I watched Rashad Phillips. Rashad, one of my favorite players ever. 
you know, and Rashad sure. like was a mentor for me at UAD. Yeah. So always give me advice. So I watched them have success, man, and things like that at UAD. So I'm like, if they did it, if I put in the work, I can follow be- behind them. But I knew I had to come in there and put in that work. I knew just me being talented wasn't gonna be good enough. So um, to answer your question, bro, when I got on the court, uh, like I was on scout team because I couldn't play, so I was always on scout team. I was going hard on scout team, bro. Like Perry, like they gonna let you score, score. Like I was just hungry. I was this one, Jimmy Twyman, that was at U of D and mm-hmm. Rulon Harris. Them, and I'm like, man, I'm about to go at them. Like mm-hmm. they're my teammates, but I'm hungry. Went through a long, long road. I want to, I want to put a doubt as wrong. Cause some people like, oh, I told you, you weren't good enough to play at Michigan State. Not knowing the inside, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Not knowing he, he, this guy ain't even in the gym. Right. You know, you know, they, everybody. Gonna, a lot of people gonna say that. Yeah, a lot of people gonna say that. But as yeah. as you growing up as a kid, you take it to the heart. Yeah. You're like, oh man, they ain't on me. I don't like me. But people gonna damn if you do, damn if you don't, man. Right. That's the old saying, bro. Right. So once my first game was against Eastern, I scored twenty seven. My first game. So once I got that first game under my belt. It was on the pop, bro. I ain't, I ain't look back. I'm like, okay. So, how much did you average that season? Uh, 21. 21. I was a, a redshirt freshman. I played uh, James Steele. Me and James Steele was starting backcourt. That was James Steele's senior year. I was a freshman. And you were, y'all almost made it to the tournament. We lost by one point to Wisconsin. We lost on the final foul call. <clears throat> Famous um, Lambeer on um, Kareem play. We lost on the final foul call, man. They called a, a bogus call on my guy. Um, and, and the guy went to the strike and knocked him down. They beat us by one point to go to the dance. Wow, that's a good one. Yeah, it was a phantom call, man. You look, mm-hmm. you, if you look that game up, man, it was a phantom call. But they was we played on their home court. They had the best record. So they had a championship game on their home court. But they hosted the tournament. Mm. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got home, home cooking. Yeah, we got, sure. we got the home cooking. Yeah, it was definitely a phantom call, though. So, but the next season you didn't play. Mm-hmm. I played the next season. I had a hand. So what happened was, I had a hand injury. I got into a severe car accident. I had just won a uh, new car of the year, freshman of the year in the conference. Um, I made the all conference team. I won the MVP of my team that that year mm-hmm. at UAD. Um, and then I had gotten into a car accident that June. Um, I was going back up to Michigan State to see my daughter's mother. She still was attending there. Went back up there, I got hit by a hit, uh, it was a hit and run. Hit me, I severely damaged my fingers. You on the freeway? I was on the freeway, I was on 696 in Beck Road, I'll never forget the area. And it was they, June, it was they June. Like they t you? They t when they hit me, I don't know what happened. All I heard, my, cause my cousin was in the back seat, cause I, I me, my first cousin and my close friend that I uh, grew up with, um, played uh, for the All-Stars with, they was dating. And like I said, my daughter's mother, was, me and her were still dating, so we, me and her would take turns going back from Lansing to Detroit. And I had drove up there, and um, I guess they T-bombed me, but whenever they, they hit me, I lost control of the wheel. So when they hit me, the car spent. And I was trying to you know, grab the wheel, but it was out of control, so we tipped over. Once we tipped over, obviously all the glass shattered out the car, and the car what was, just, car was it? it was a, a trailblazer. Oh, okay. So when it flipped over, my hand was just spinning with the car. Like I was looking up, like, like I seen the car, I seen the sparks literally, literally shoot up from the car. Like I thought I was about to die. I'm just gonna be honest with you, man. I thought I was about to die because it was it was a dark highway. It was raining. And the sparks was just flying, and my hand was was it was, it was the, nighttime. It was nighttime. So I was trying to pull my hand up because I seen blood just shoot up from my hand. So I'm trying to pull my hand up from off the car, but my car just is spinning, my hand spinning with the car. Dang. So once it stopped, I'm like, I was shocked because I still was alive. I'm like, I'm like, oh, we alive. So I was, or I was in the days, I, I tapped my cousin in because my cousin was just hollering and screaming. I'm like, y'all, come on, let's go. I'm like, we alive, y'all, let's get out of this car because we was face down on a dark highway. So it could have been a car coming not seeing us and it could have just been all bad so, for so us, bro. The truck was in the middle of the highway. It was in the middle of the highway on a dark, rainy road. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I'm telling them, like, y'all, let's go. Like, I mean, my hands, my fingers is not even detached to each other no more. Not trying to sound gruesome or nothing, but I'm just, they weren't even detached no more, bro. And um, I was trying to keep them strong. I'm like, y'all, we alive, man. Let's get some help. So luckily, some cars seen us, man, seen need to help. They just started pulling over. 
EMS came and looked down at my hand, bro, and then my hand, like my fingers weren't even attached to each other. I'm like, dude, it's over with. I don't lost all, I don't lost my fingers. So I um I looked at my fingers and they were severed. So I'm like, dang, I can't play no more. That's what I'm thinking in my hand. So my my cousin seen it, my cousin seen them and my and my and my my, my close friend, it just broke down crying because they knew the future I had of me. They like, it was just a sad moment, man. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I th I just knew all my fingers were gonna be cut off. Well, three of them was gonna get cut off. I injured three of them. So, what what were your cousin? Who's your cousin and who else? In the it was room? my cousin. It was my close friend. His name was Eric Bryce. What were they friend. saying during that time? Like, what they was because I was they, like they were in shock I, as well. They was in shock, man. Like my cousin was just screaming, crying because it was her car. It wasn't my car. I just drove because I knew the way. I knew how to get through Lansing. And like I said, they was dating in the back. So you know how you, you know younger man, you gonna sit back there with your girl, hold your girl, and all that stuff. So I'm like, I drive up there. I know, I know they're right up there. Y'all can just chill. So when they seen my hand, it just she was already distraught because first of all, we almost lost our life. A. Second of all, she had just got that car like two months prior. It got totaled. Then she seen my hand. She just freaked out when she seen my hand. She freaked out. And I'm still like, calm down, y'all. We alive. I'm just thinking that we alive. In the back of my mind, though, I'm like, I'm done. It's over with for basketball. I just came off having to do the average 20 as a freshman on a Division One level. I don't care what school you go to. That's a lot of points for Division One level, bro. So I had a bright future ahead of me. I'm, I'm like, it's over. So... You go and what did the hospital? What did they say? So I went. I went to uh, Boma. I never forget, man. I went to Boma. Um, I was so heavily drugged up because I, I had to get surgery right away. Um, they did their surgery, and when I woke up the next morning, I had, you know I was just wrapped up. So I asked my mom. My mom was right there by my bedside, and my daughter's mother was also. And I was like, "Mom, what's going on with my fingers?" I'm like, "Did I lose my hand? What's going on?" So the doctor told me like. Um, we, you know, we stuck pins from the tips to the ends. We had to sew his fingers back together. Um, but they was like, we had to amputate the middle. We had to amputate the, his middle finger, the tip of it. We couldn't save it. So I just dropped my head. I'm like, mm. I'm like, I know I'm, I know, I'm like, I know I'm done. So I asked him, I said, you know, doc, just be real with me. Am I, can I play this year? Am I going to play ball again? He was like, I can't say you won't never be able to play again. But he's like, next year, no, definitely. You won't be able to play next year. I just dropped my head and started crying. Like I said, I just came off that great year at UAD. I had just came all at controversy from Michigan State to having a great year at UAD. My future was bright. Um, I, you know, I was Perry all that or gave me the keys as a freshman to the team. So I was just like, man, like um, I ain't gonna be able to play my sophomore year. So it was a of course a level of dis disappointment. Oh yeah. And so what what was what was Perry Watson saying? Perry was, uh, you know, he was there for me, man. He was, he was, he was devastated too, man. You know, Perry wanted, he wanted the best for me. He, he wanted me to come there. He got me to come. And Bakari, Alexander, they, 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 they got me to come there. He didn't do, he didn't recruit me out of high school because I was a five-star recruit or a four-star. He knew he wasn't finna get on Brandon Cotton, yeah. but he always told me like these doors are always open for you. So me and him only had probably like one conversation in, in high school. I didn't even know Perry that well. Bakari got me to come there. Because Bakari was uh, was recruiting my other guys to play for the All Stars because I played with a lot of guys who probably weren't high major coming out of out of out of, um, out of high school, but they was good. They were still D Division One players. So my coach Shepard threw an open gym at the pores to get guys who didn't have a scholarship a look still. Mm -hmm. So Bakari was always up there every open gym. He's always telling me his famous words was "Remember the Titans, BC. Don't work out. Remember the Titans." So, you know, at the time, it's going in one at the other ear. I'm like, man, I'm about to make it that best thing. Right. I ain't going to U of D. <laughs> so, Perry was, uh, <laughs> no, nah, Perry was, uh, he was supportive, man. And uh, he knew I was a tough kid, man. He knew, he, he knew. And I had it in my mind. I'm like, if God gave me his ability, he's like, the good thing about it, I had no nerve damage. I didn't damage any nerves. Just a lot of bone loss, cartilage. So the doctor's like, that's a blessing. He's like, if you'd have nerve damage, I would say, no, you threw. He's like, I'm not saying, he's like, I think you will be able to play one day, but just not this year. And I had it in my mind, I'm like, 
just because you said I can't play this year, I'm going to play this year. And that's when the rehab began. That's when the rehab began. And I attacked it aggressively, bro. It was painful. I'm trying to bend your fingers with pins in them and stitches in them. That was painful, man. The worst pain you could ever imagine. I don't want nobody to experience that pain, bro. Like, but I'm like, dude, I got I, I got dreams of playing in the NBA. I got dreams of making a lot of money. I got I got I got I gotta buy my mom a house. My cousin helped me go to the poor, so I gotta get my cousin that Bentley he wanted, bro. I got you know, so I got had, had a daughter at the time, I'm like I gotta do this, bro. Got my grandma, man, like she's still standing on Mac and Van Dyke, bro. I gotta I gotta get to it. And I just attacked the rehab aggressively, bro. And uh, I got into that car accident June 5th. So obviously, I had to wear pants for six weeks. So I just, I, I was going up to UD every day. I was lifting with one arm. Um, I was doing a lifting on my legs. I, I go to UD and work out for an hour and a half, run the stairs at Callahan. I used to run Callahan stairs, bro. I go home, eat, probably take a nap by now. And then I go to King Track and bust me two miles. I was doing two a days with a cast on my hand. I was doing tour days, bro. So how long did that last? That lasted, uh, I just went back to school in September. By September, they, the doctor was like, you progressing fast. Like, he was like, you progressing fast. Like, whatever you doing, you progressing. Took the pins out, I was able to start using my hand more. And uh, my trainer at UOD, he knew I was tough. So he like, if it's not painful, and the doctor told him, like, he can't do no more damage to his fingers. There's nothing he can do more. Can't break, I mean, outside of breaking the bone, but that's what any, if he didn't have an injury. Right. But he can't do no more damage. So once he gave it, told our trainer at Detroit, at the UOD, he can't, I can't do more damage. He was like, I'm going to take, I'm not going to rush you into things, but we're going to day by day do some ball handling. So what he'd do was he'd take my fingers together and um, I had to get used to handling the ball because I was, I was a right-hander. But I was always strong driving left. That was my dominant hand, just driving left. Mm -hmm. And uh, he like, you know, make some moves going left. And I was getting better and better by the week. And then by October, by the time practice, official practice started, I was, I was at practice. I didn't miss a game. I was there for the start of the season. So how did that season go? Um, we didn't win a lot of games, um, but I, I had a good year. I made a uh, all conference and I averaged eight I averaged eighteen a game that year. And now in what year would that technically be? My so that was my sophomore year. Okay. Yeah, that's my sophomore year. I averaged eighteen points a game my sophomore year. So your sophomore year, then what about your junior year? My junior year, um, like I said, we didn't have for the talent we had, I don't know how he went as successful, like Rashard I and mean, Jermaine was, but my junior year, I stepped it up. I think I averaged like nineteen my junior year. But we wasn't winning. So when you're not winning at a, a mid-major, yeah. I mean, people knew who I was. I had the politics behind me. We weren't winning no games. Right. But my individual play was good. I, I finished <clears throat> 13th all-time at UAD, 14th all-time. I had 1,500 points in two and a half years. I had 1,500 points in two and a half years. I, I don't think nobody at UAD even had 2,000 points. I think Shy. I think yeah, Shy had twenty three hundred. Yeah, yeah, you know, Shy had to go to the UND. Yeah. I, I got my hands. Antoine Davis was cold. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but different time back when Shy was playing. Yeah, that's different. That's, that's different, that's bro. Different. Come, that's come different. on, man. You, you we, we all know that. So Shy, did. I tell yeah. people forever, Shy forever that go to UND forever. Yeah. Antoine Davis got his numbers. He got his numbers, but yeah. I mean, Shy was winning. Yeah. They was winning. They and was. And winning. they had. People in the stands. And people in the stands. And he was playing with another NBA yeah. guard that he had to come in. Because Jermaine was older than Shaw. Jermaine was a senior when Shaw was a sophomore. He was an NBA guard. He was an NBA guard, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Shaw still had to. I still got to make sure I get these guys involved because this guy probably playing with two in the backcourt. Yeah. Even your boy uh, that came in between you and uh, Antoine. Dray McCullough. Yeah. Yeah. They had a lot of success. They won. Him and Eli Homan. Yeah. They won. Yeah. You know, I used to go up there and play open gym with them guys. This not I was playing overseas. So I was go up there to play open gym with them. So when you, you played your senior year at UOD? I didn't play my senior year at UOD. And that's where the story comes in. That's where they like, what happened to BC? I didn't play my senior year. It was an incident happened at a, at a liquor store across the street. Um, 
I was getting ready to uh, we was getting ready to head to our official going on Livernois. Going Livernois, mm -hmm. Pied Piper. Yeah. I took a team out. I was going to my senior year. I was leader of the team. I was I was the best player on the team for, for two years. So took a team out. You know, we young, you know, college kids on campus, you know, you're drinking on college stuff like that. Go to the Pied Piper. Um, look, had a little bit too much to drink, I'm not gonna lie. And uh, I had just sold a car or something like that. So I had a couple of dollars, I think I had like $15 in my pocket. That's, you know, that's a lot for a college student. I'm pulling out money and buying uh, champagne and all this. You know, we, we partied because we like, bro, we about to be doing tour days or we about to be study hall, film sessions. We about to be on lock. So we about to get ready to, to play. Like, we finna go out and have a ball tonight, though. Everything on me. I went back to the liquor store. Uh, I think I had owed her some change and I didn't want to break a bill. And I was like, can I, you know, can I bring it back to you tomorrow? I'm like, you see me? Like, I go up there just on the regular, just go get something to drink for the dorm or anything. And um, he was like, man, y'all athletes always want, want something for free, man. So I was like, I was saucy a little bit. I was already drinking. So I'm like, dang. So I kind of, the east side on me came out on him a little bit. I cut up on him. Like, I ain't vandalized the store or nothing like that. But me and my uh, my other backcourt mate, you know, we was on camera just cussing him out. Cussing him out. Like, yeah. man, you know, F you all that. Yeah. We go out to the parking lot, dude. We drinking in the parking lot. We're not 21. And we smoking black and miles. He showed to take the Perry. The owner of the liquor store showed to take the Perry. Everybody knew who I was. I was Brandon Cotton on UD campus. And I guess he felt the way because I cussed him out. So he like, oh no. Like my man tripping. Like, I already sell this guy liquor here under 21. Right. But <laughs> I would do it because he branded cotton. But once I cussed him out, he showed to take the Perry, man. And um, it was so, it had went like, had like two weeks had went past. I haven't got the incident even happened. Cause like I said, I didn't vandalize this though. Me and him ain't getting into no physical altercation, nothing like that. I just cussed him out and walked out. And he went and showed Perry to take. So after we, we had individual workouts that morning. And Perry's like, after, after we work out, uh, BC and John, I want to meet y'all in the office. So me and John is thinking it's a preseason talk. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, right, this team, let's try to, let's, let's try to get y'all to where y'all need to be. And they was, used to record our individual sessions and tell us, you know, this is what you're doing in individuals right. you need to work on. He put on the tape. I think he put on the tape of us working out. I look, it's us in the Pied Piper store. I'm like, dog, I'm like, so I tapped John, me and John look like, bro. He like, yeah, we're well, like, what's this about? So, you know, I man, I said, well, coach, you know, we was over there. Coach knew we was drinking. Yeah. And my man had to take some type of ownership into it too, because he told us liquor under 21. But that's still one of the excuses for us to act out the way we acted out. But when you right. sell it to minors, you're opening up that door. But coach looking at it as like, y'all the faces of this campus. Mm -hmm. Y'all could have handled it better. So he was like, look, man. And it then he showed him the tape of us in the back of the parking lot drinking and smoking black and miles. Honest to God, man, we must smoke no weed, nothing like that. Right. But Perry seems to sell smoking something. He like, what's that y'all smoking? I'm like a black and mild coach. I'm like, honest to God, coach, it's a black and mild. He's like, I'm going to find out tomorrow. I got a drug test in the morning. I'm like, cool. Perry, last words was to me and John Good was, as long as y'all pass the drug test, I'm going to sweep this under the rug. But just know, I know everybody. Nothing y'all do around here, not finna get back to us, especially you, Brandon. Come on, man. Tighten up. But he, I, 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 I assume he was cutting me a pass because I never got in no trouble at UAD. I was never ineligible, never got to no, no, nothing outside of the court trouble. So I feel like he was cutting us a pass. John was an all-A student. I said, okay, coach cutting us a break. I'm like, we ain't smoking no weed. We're gonna pass the drug test. We good. Take the drug test, came back. They like y'all good, y'all pass the drug test, no problem. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, we dodged the bullet, John. It was a Wednesday. We never had study hall on Wednesdays. I came back to visit my grandmother. My grandmother still was standing on Seaburn off Mac. I came back to visit her. My mama came. My mom was like, so what you done did? I said, what you mean? Because I ain't tell her about the whole situation. She like, why am I getting phone calls that you suspended the first two games of the year? And I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm like, everything behind them. I'm like, I go on the, the website that evening. It's a big picture of me. You and D Star Guard, Brandon Cotton along with John Good, 
are spending the first two games due to a detrimental conduct, detrimental conduct to the team. So I'm like, nah, this is an error. I'm like, I'm like, don't nobody even know about this with Perry. Only because he know the owner of the Piper liquor store. I called Perry. I said, Coach, you know it's an article, man. Sammy John suspended. Perry like, oh yeah, man. I had to take this. I had to take this to the AD. Like I had to. So I'm like, Coach. I'm like, this happened like three weeks, two, three weeks ago, Coach. I'm like, man, if it was that serious, this owner would have been over to the university to make sure we've been disciplined. And once he suspended me, dude, I just lost all trust in Perry, bro. I just lost all trust in him. I'm like, you know what, man? I ain't playing, man. And John, like, bro, you tripping. John, like, bro, it's two games. It's two exhibition games at that. He ain't spending us for the first game of the season, B. He like, bro, we gotta just roll with the punches, B. Like, bro, he's like that. He's like, he's like, that is whack. He's like, but B, bro, we only gotta deal with this man for like three more months, bro. But uh, you know, I can bat my Perry, man. Perry, Perry helped me get my degree. Showed me the course to get my degree. Perry won nothing but the best for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not gonna bat my offer. But um, I seen the way things happen with, between him and Rashad Phillips. The way things develop with Rashad. I know because I went there. So I just lost trust in him. I didn't think that he was going to have my best interest at heart when the NBA scouts called and I asked about my, my character. I didn't think so. So I figured by me having the, the numbers I put up already, I'll probably just go to and, and probably put my name in the draft, see what happened, or go to like an NBA draft camp or go overseas, just make money. I don't even want to play for them no more. Not knowing they still gonna call him and yeah. ask him. Still, right. like they they want to know. <laughs> he left Michigan State. All right, he left U of D. He averaging almost twenty points a game for his career. Why he ain't playing a senior year? Right. Any scout or GM would. That's gonna be a red flag yeah. in the air, bro. First question. Year. That's the first question. Why he ain't mm-hmm. playing? Mm-hmm. So I didn't. I, I didn't think about all that. I thought I could just escape. And Speedy was there. It's like Speedy was like B. You good. Relax. It's two games. It, it happens. It's not the end of the world. So Speedy was pushing me, and Speedy told me like, "Bro, if you don't play your senior year, you're gonna forever regret this." I'm like, "Coach, I'm gonna be all right. Like, coach, I'm gonna go. I can go overseas and play, man. Like, I got a guy who's trying to get me in Portsmouth. He says you gotta be a senior. You gotta play your senior year to even go to Portsmouth. Mm-hmm. Like, stop believing what everybody's telling you. Mm-hmm. I still not listening to coach with Speedy." I'm like, man, I ain't playing, man. I don't trust this guy, man. He's shady, man. He got me all on the newspaper. Like, I'm a bad kid, man. Like, I ain't got time for that, man. So I, I didn't play my senior year. Would you say that was ego again? Ego. <laughs> to the, man, ego ain't even a word. I don't know what that was. Yeah. And I had my big homie like, man, what are you going to do? Not play you? Like, what are you going to do? Not play you? All right. B. Chill out. Everybody's telling me, like, relax, bro. It's okay. I know you pissed off the so way. So was anybody in- encouraging you yeah, my- outside yourself to quit? No. Uh-uh. You no. Nobody was encouraging me to quit. No. Uh-uh. No. Nobody said, man, you should walk away from Perry. Nobody did that. Mm-hmm. I did that myself. Uh-huh. Like, I'm glad that I'm older now. The younger Brandon. And I'm still working. Don't get me wrong. I ain't all the way there yet. When I got something made up in my mind to do, I'm going to do it. I don't care what nobody got to say. That's just that was just, I guess that was one of my flaws I need to work on. Same thing that got you through your injury. Same thing that got me through my injury. I didn't use that when adversity came. In a different form. Right. Because it diversity won in my favor. Absolutely. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So what did what happened? Man, I, I um I didn't play. And I um Speedy still had my back. Speedy still believed in me. He got me a look at uh, Ryan Dumars. This is Ryan Dumars. Joe Dumars' nephew was an agent. He worked me out at Joe Dumars' field house on Woodward. Because he's like, he ain't played this year. Like, can he still go? So he's like, yeah. Like, he still go. He's still been working out. And I still was working out and stuff. So he worked me out. I killed the workout. I had a job in the Ukraine the next day, $7,500 a month. Got there, culture shop. Didn't know. I've never been out of the country a day in my life. <laughs> Came home, bro. Didn't know. I didn't even know what type of money I was leaving on the table. I had to sign a contract for seventy five hundred dollars a month. I was getting paid seven grand a month. That was my first contract without me playing my senior year. And the team told me it's bonus. I had bonuses included in my contract. It was top league in Ukraine. Top league. 
And you, you, you walked away. I walked away, man. Didn't even know how much money I was leaving on the table. Didn't even know what I was leaving on the table outside the money. I could have went from seven thousand a month to ten thousand a month to twenty thousand a month. Right. So I don't, I didn't know. Right. I just was like, man, I don't understand what these people saying. I'm standing over here, look, it's looking like a Haiti over here, dude. Like I'm, like, I mean, I had a maid. I came on practice. I had a maid cleaning my house up, man. And I walked away from it. So, I was just culture so, shock. So what happened when you walked away? So I walked away. I hooked up with this guy named Kevin Scott. Uh -huh. um, he's another agent. And he got me a job in the Dominican Republic. By that time, I knew when I go over here, and nobody gonna understand what you're saying. You ain't gonna understand what they're saying. You gotta toughen it out. And the Dominican Republic is like a low budget Vegas if you ever visit. Yeah. So that was easier for me. It was more. And they look like you. And they look like me over there. They want not It wasn't just totally foreign. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I played well over there, man. I um, my my first contract, they only paid me six hundred bucks a week. Um, because I because I didn't have any experience playing professional, they just wanted off my UAD numbers, so they paid me. So they was like, we only can pay them six hundred bucks a week. If not, like, like if he prove himself to be who they who 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 we seeing, we'll break him off. I went over there mid season. The team wasn't doing good. I picked the team all the way up and took them to the championship over there. We lost to a team. Um, that same team had I think they had three peated. Oh, okay. so we lost. We lost to a better team, but. I got a phone call to go play um, in the capital, in the top league, and they started paying me a thousand a week. So I became legend in the Dominican Republic, man. Like I, like if you look it up, man, I averaged like thirty three points a game for my career over at. And, How many um, years did you play? I there? played two years over there. In the DR. I played, and then I got uh, I went to the Fort Wayne Mad Ants again. Speedy Walker set that up for me because he was working for the Pistons, still is, I believe. I want to say yeah. Last mm -hmm. time I talked to him, he said he still was. Um, I made the D League. I went to a, uh, I went to an open tryout. Anybody could have went, dude. All you gotta do is pay two fifty. You can go. You know how they did it. Yeah. Open tryout right. in Fort Wayne. It was a hundred and fifty players. They kept me in a seven footer. Of the hundred and fifty players, they kept me in a seven footer. Mm. So you were in the D League. Yep. So I made. I, so I made the cut. I made the. I made the, which people got, a, you got a 2% chance of making it when you, right. you go to something like that. Let's just be real. It's a money thing for them, for real. So it kept me and it kept a seven footer. I still had to go to the um, training camp and I'll, and make the team still. You still got to play the vets who came, who played last year. Mm -hmm. I made that cut. So I was on a roster. Um, then I got a call to go over to uh, Munich, Germany. I played in Munich, Germany. Um, they really didn't do well over there. Um, our team didn't do well. And then I had, once I finished playing in Germany, I, my last thought was in Iceland. That was in 2012. I played well in Iceland. They just didn't have the money to pay me. The money right. just wasn't there. They was only paying me about a couple grand a month. It just wasn't enough money. So I just fell back on my degree. And by that time I had three kids already back in the, back home in the States. So I came home and fell my degree and started teaching, man. That's when, I, that's when I started uh, working in the education field. And your degree from U University of Detroit? Mm -hmm. Bachelor, I got a bachelor's degree, yeah. Okay. And how long you been in, how long were you in education? I was in education for, uh, man, I did education from 2000, I started playing in 2012. I did education all the way up to 2016, I did education. I was a para pro. Started off as a substitute teacher. Then once they seen I can relate to the kids, um, I was a pair educator. I was in, I worked with the behavioral kids. I was a behavior specialist, counselor, and I was also a, a, a tennis agent. So, if, if you see a young, young middle school kid that you believe got potential, what would be your advice to him? You don't know him or anything. What would be your advice? Stay working, man. Um, I know it might sound cliche-ish. Stay working. Never. Um, I don't care how tough things may get. Um, overcome adversity, whatever it is, bro. Um, male or female. You got some girls that can play, too. Mm -hmm. um, people come from different households. You see some adversity, man. If you got an opportunity to play Division One basketball, any level basketball, because it's going to help you in the long run. It's gone. This is your life. 
these guys that's coaching you, these administrators, they're already successful in life, man. They they in the they they're coaching you. They are overseers. Stay with it, man. Work hard. Don't don't let adversity make you go left when you're supposed to go right or keep straight. Work. Listen to people. Ask questions. If you don't understand, that's our problem. We don't ask questions. We might just get lost and try to make our own solution. And sometimes our problem ain't worse than what it seems. What, what about ego? Got to put that to the back burner. It's easier said than done, especially if you a stud. But you got to you gotta talk to people who's been successful. Uh, that's That would be my advice. Talk to somebody who you know that probably should have been somewhere where they supposed to have been, but they didn't, they didn't make it for whatever reason. It could be because they weren't tall enough. They weren't athletic enough. But talk to somebody who you know is successful in your department and see... What ha what did you, what what happened what 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 didn't happen in your favor that's that might happen to mine what can I do you know what I'm saying like I asked Rashad a lot of questions because I till to this day I don't understand why he never got drafted that's I think I think all of us probably asking that question that's for Detroit right yeah. so I I asked him a lot of questions man just what what do I do so this won't happen and of course obviously some things are not in your control. But you, but the bottom line is you want to leave everything to where it's not in your control no more. You don't want to say, I didn't make it because I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Leave it to where it's like, I did everything I could. I worked my hardest. I gave it my all. Now I'm going to let God and let these GMs and these people that's administrated, that I let them, I'm going to let them uh, make that decision. But I know I did everything in my power. So, you know, and we're going to wrap it up. And I typically last question in the interview, I, um, I ask, so what, what, what role is education playing in your life? How important is education to you? It's very important uh, in my life. Like I said, it took me a very long time to realize that. To be honest, dude, I didn't really realize how important it was to my um, senior year. Because I had to get like a 3.2 so I wouldn't be a Prop 48 at Michigan State. Because my overall GPA, either I had to do that or I had to score big on the ACT. It was either one of the two. And I'm like, my chances, I got a chance of getting a 3.0 before I got a chance of scoring, getting a 23 or 24 on a test, bro. I mean, honestly, man, that test's hard. So I um, I realized the importance of my, my senior year and Education, man, is, is very important because it can lead you to a lot of places. Because nothing in life is guaranteed. I don't care how good you is. But if you got a paperwork saying that I have a bachelor's degree, I got a master's degree, I got an associate's degree, I got a teaching job, I apply it by me just having that paperwork. I got a job in like three days as a sub, they assigned me somewhere. I had no experience teaching. But by me having that paperwork, I was able to go get me a career job because I had an education. If I didn't have that paperwork, I wouldn't be able to do that. It's that simple. It's just that simple, bro. I literally, my my homeboy, the same guy that I was hiding out at Eastern with, was like, yo, you ain't playing no more. You need to come try this subbing. Like, like it's easy. I'm like, man, I can't teach no kids. Like, man, I ain't, I ain't that bright. Like, well, I'm going to teach them like I ain't. I mean, I'm bright, but not. But I'm like, I, I, I'm not a. They like, he like, no, nah, man, it's a lesson plan leave for you, bro. You got to <laughs> just follow the stuff. You gotta just follow everything. It ain't what you thinking, bro. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna try. You know, and, and the money was money was decent to basically just to to be around kids. So I applied. They hit me back up. Like, come do your background check, take a TB test, uh, and you on. And once I did all that, it's like, okay, you report. My first sub job was at U Prep, and I did it, and I loved it, and I I stayed doing it. Up, and I work with the youngest kindergarten kids and seniors. Yeah, that's sweet. I appreciate it, man. And uh, you know, hopefully somebody, you know, the next brand of cotton can can benefit from something. For like sure. That, you know? And that's my like I said, that's my whole purpose of taking the time out to talk to, you know, guys such as yourself, man. Like I said, I re a guy reached out to me. I never his name is Robert Crawford, my guy. Like I said, it's on my um I shared it on my on my Facebook. I don't. I don't want from Canada Paint. Like I, I, I saw his interview. Yeah, like I know, like I know you and stuff like that, man. I watched y'all play coming up, but when you, when guys reached out to me, explain my story. I do this for the next brand of I don't do this for me. Yeah, 
And that's why I interview. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't. With a story. I'm, my, what I did was 20 years old. I don't do this for Brandon. I do this to help that next kid yeah, next that might that, that might be next. lost or might be going through it. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about transferring next year. Right. right. Let me hope I can hear and listen to his story. Right. That parent. That parent. That wants to transfer their son. They want to transfer their son because their son been the man yeah. in middle school and high school. Now they in college. Now they they not, you know. So that's that'd be my whole purpose of sharing my testimony, man. So so that that next brand kind of hear that, bro. So.